All right, y'all, we made it. It is part three of my three-part shoulder series. So it's gonna be pretty advanced. If you're like, whoa, girl, I don't work out that much. I'm just here to learn some new things. Click in the link below to get part one or part two of this series. Part one is a little more beginner. Part two is a little more intermediate. And then this is part three. So we're gonna be, we're gonna be going hard, okay? And I know, I know that those of you who've been following all three videos are ready for that. So we're gonna get right into it. If you like this video, as always, be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're not already so that you can get notified when I post new videos. This is going to be the end of the shoulder series. And with all the chit chat out of the way, let's get right into our exercises. Yeah. Okay, so we are going to start by rolling our shoulder back. Take your arm straight in front of you and roll it back four times, making sure you get your fullest range of motion here. You wanna get it all lubricated in that joint and reverse, go in the other way, four times the opposite direction. Once you've done four each way, switch to the other side and do four one direction and then four the other. Now we're gonna take our arms straight up to the ceiling, open them up as far as we can to the back, and then back forward. We're gonna do this four times straight up to the ceiling, opening your chest, and then forward. And now we're gonna reverse, going back and up and down four times. Shake it out and get ready. Grab a TheraBand. We are going to put it down on the floor and step on it with our feet. Make sure you're stepping right in the middle of the TheraBand. Grab both ends and hold them in your fists. We're gonna take our arms straight up in front of us. Pull our elbows back, pinching our shoulder blades together in the back. Straight back out and down. We're gonna do this eight times. Really act like you have a pencil between your two little shoulder blades and squeeze them together like you're trying to hold that pencil in place. Make sure that your ribs stay closed and your abs stay tight the entire time. And make sure you also go nice and slow. Slow and controlled is the key here, guys. We don't wanna be ripping that TheraBand all over the place. We wanna keep it nice and even. We got two more left. And shake that out. Wrap up your TheraBand, toss it to the All right, we're gonna start in a downward dog position here. Now, take a second to find your true downward dog. Your heel should be pressing into the floor. Your belly button should be pulling towards your thighs so that your lower back is long. You don't want your spine to be curved like this. You want your lower back to be pressing towards your thighs and for your spine to be as long and flat as possible with your heels reaching towards the ground. Now we're gonna curl our tummy in and make a round spine until we flatten out to a full flat plank. Then we're gonna curve our belly in and up and go back to a downward dog position. We're gonna roll through the spine again, go to a plank and roll through the spine to go to downward dog. We're gonna do this eight total times. As you roll through, make sure you really Punch in your upper back before flattening it out and expanding your shoulder blades. You should really feel your abs work in here to articulate every vertebrae in your spine. We 
have two more just like this. Last one. All right, stand back up and find yourself a flat wall. You're gonna put your hands straight out and press into your shoulders and then push the wall away. These are a blocking exercise. Then you can try to bounce off the wall and push with just your shoulders. Notice my elbows are not bending. It is just my shoulders pushing off the wall. If you're comfortable, you can take a few steps away from the wall and try repeating that same thing again. Make sure you're not using your wrists, you're just using those shoulder blades. After you've done eight of those, grab that TheraBand one more time and we're gonna repeat the first exercise we did. Taking our arms straight up in front of us, pinching our shoulder blades back, and extending back out before lowering down. You have eight of these nice, slow, and controlled. My arms are starting to get a little bit tired here. So my movements became slightly rocky, that's okay. We want to keep it as smooth and controlled as possible. Try not to jerk the TheraBand around in any direction. And last one. All right, make your way to the floor again and find your downward facing dog. We're gonna roll through our spine out to a plank eight total times, articulating every single vertebrae. Take a little stretch in your downward dog, rolling through the ankles, and then stand back up. Grab your TheraBand for our next set of exercises. We're gonna take our TheraBand really tight grip here, take it above your head, and you're going to pull it apart to the ceiling, to the diagonal, to the front, to the down diagonal, and to the floor. We're gonna repeat going to the bottom diagonal, front, top diagonal, ceiling. You want to use your lats as you do this and pull just apart so it's a small motion but you're taking your arms through a full range by hitting each position on the way up and the way down and giving your lats a squeeze from multiple angles, you're going to increase your mobility while also increasing your strength. We're gonna go up and down one more time.
or just up. <laughs> Toss your TheraBand off to the side and find your nice wall again. You're gonna walk up to a handstand with your feet up against the wall and your head facing the wall. Make sure you find your nice handstand position and then walk your hands out, sliding your feet down the wall until you're in a plank and then walk back up the wall using your hands and your feet to push yourself all the way back up to the handstand position. Repeat this anywhere between two to four times depending on how many you can do. I only got through three here. Some days are better than others. Come on down and have a seat with your TheraBand. We're gonna do a little bit of mobility here and then repeat both of those exercises that we just did. So you're gonna take your TheraBand up and around your back and then up and back to the front. Now I like doing this exercise with a TheraBand because it has resistance but it's not perfectly tight like a piece of material or scarf which can cause you to over rotate your shoulders with the theraband if your shoulders are being pressed past their limit your muscles will pull it apart to allow your arms to go back and forward safely i don't recommend doing this with a belt or scarf which i have seen on the internet because you are more prone to over rotating and pulling the muscles in your shoulder joint. And then we can just take some up and arounds with a TheraBand, just trying to hit all the points of rotation and stretching out the joint after we just worked the muscles. Another variation is to take it up and around the back and do a full stretch to the back where you're bringing your arms down towards the floor and then up and over to the other side. As you can see by my nice facial expressions, this one feels a little bit intense. It should be a good stretch. It shouldn't be painful or anything, but definitely feel a nice stretch on this one. And shake that out. We are going to repeat our pulling exercises with our hands starting above our head and then hitting the diagonal, the front, the middle, the bottom diagonal, and the floor. Make sure your ribs are nice and tight and closed here as you go through each point. Engage those lats and squeeze every time. We go for four sets in total. One set is going all the way down to the bottom and then all the way back up to the ceiling. start to slide down the TheraBand, just adjust them. You want them to be pretty close together so that you get a really good resistance as you pull the TheraBand apart. Toss the TheraBand to the side, go back to the wall, and find your handstand facing the wall. We're gonna walk out to a plank and then walk back into our handstand. Again, two to four times, depending on how many you can do with good form, keeping your elbows straight and using your shoulders to walk out, and pressing back in without bending the elbows or falling over. <laughs> 
This one's very difficult, so if you feel wobbly or stumbly, just do your best. Maybe don't go all the way out to a plank your first time. Just walk out a little bit and then walk back in. It's completely up to you and your comfort level. Now that we're done with that, we're gonna go back to our wall and go into a handstand in the same position. I want you to just watch me on this one. You're going to find a nice good handstand position and then tap one shoulder at a time, alternating for four complete shoulder taps. Try to go slow and controlled here. And then we're going to press our shoulders up to our ears and relax them down. Notice I'm not bending my elbows or opening and closing my rib cage. I'm just moving my shoulders. Carefully come down from the wall however you feel comfortable. Don't take out any curtains on the way. <laughs> Now that you've watched me do it, go ahead and give it a try while I repeat the same thing again so that you can follow along. We have four taps and then four total shoulder shrugs. All right, now we're gonna go back down to the floor into our nice plank position. And we are going to do some basic push-ups with a side plank. So we do one push-up, then we open our arms to a T in a side plank. Do another push-up, open up to the opposite side plank, and repeat for eight total times. Try not to send your hips backwards when you're going from the front plank to the side plank. Try to rotate your whole body in one smooth piece. push-ups in a row yet, you can just go from front plank to side plank and repeat that eight times, or do a half push-up, or go down to the knees. Whatever variation works best for you is great. All right, shake that out and go on back to your lovely wall. We're gonna repeat four shoulder taps and four shoulder shrugs just like we did last time. Come down carefully. your way over to a plank. This is your last set of eight push-ups to side plank.
on down to your chest and just give yourself a gentle cobra stretch to shake that out before standing back up and heading over to a wall. Now we're going to face away from the wall and kick up to our handstand. I just like to do different variations facing the wall or facing away from it. We're going to lean into one arm and try to lift the opposite arm off the floor and hold for about three seconds. Then switch to the other side. Now, those of you who know me know I dislocated my left shoulder about three months ago, so I can't quite bear all of my weight on that arm yet, but that's okay. I'm working my way up to it. We'll get there eventually. All right, go back down to the floor into your downward dog position, but this time we are gonna go to our elbows. This will be a nice deep stretch in your shoulders. And then you're going to take yourself out to a plank and then press back towards your elbows. My socks were kind of sliding around here, so I was having trouble finding the exact positioning of my feet. But you want to get yourself out to a flat plank and then press back towards your shoulders. We're gonna do this eight times. As you can see, this localizes all of the movement into your shoulder joint, which is great for mobility and strength in those joints. And of course, it's probably better without socks on. All right, shake that out. And then go into a nice snail stretch. Reach those arms straight out in front of you. Look up to the front with your chin on the floor and make sure your hips are lined up over your knees. Breathe and relax here for as long as you need to feel a good stretch in your shoulders. If it's not a deep enough stretch for you, you can take your hands to a prayer position and you'll definitely feel a way deeper stretch in your shoulders. If it is enough for you, stay in the normal snail stretch and just breathe and relax. Come on out of your stretch and we're gonna go back to the wall to do one more set of one arm handstands. Lean into one side and lift your arm off the floor, holding for three to five seconds, and then lean into the opposite side to repeat. I was slightly more successful on this attempt, but my shoulder's still not quite ready for that position. Again, we're working back our strength, slowly but surely. Come back down to the floor, and we have our last set of rocks from an elbow plank to an elbow downward dog. Out to an elbow plank, pressing up to a downward dog. Make sure every time you hit that downward dog, you're getting the maximum strength. Make sure you get in eight total rocks. Don't mind my cat just coming to say hello. This is our newest addition to the household. Her name is Serenity and she is absolutely adorable. Now find a nice pigeon position and take the same arm as bent leg up to the ceiling and then the same arm as your straight leg across your chest and lie down on the floor. This is gonna give you a deep stretch in your shoulder as well as a nice stretch in your hip. So we're doing two birds with one stone, friends. Efficiency. Breathe here and just relax into the stretch.
Come on out when you're ready and switch legs and arms. Our bent leg arm is going to go up to the ceiling and then the same arm as our straight leg is going across our chest. Come on up out of that stretch and go down to your chest laying flat on the floor. I have my legs bent behind me just so that I'm in the camera frame, but you can have your legs flat. And then you're gonna reach one toe across your back and press with your opposite arm to open up your shoulder. Then take that top arm and reach it open to the back with your palm facing the ceiling. This is a nice stretch. If you want this stretch to be more explained, you can watch part two of this series where I break it down much slower. But assuming that you've done part two, we're just gonna get right into it and relax in the stretch. Make sure you hit both sides before We have one more stretch left and then we are done. Going back over to our wall, we're gonna go up into a bridge and test the flexibility and range in our shoulders by seeing how far our hands have to be from the wall before we can put our chest onto the wall. This is a really good way to test how much progress you've made in your shoulder flexibility and back flexibility. The further your wrists are away from the wall, the more range you have in your shoulders. If this is a good stretch for you, stay here. But if you want a slightly more intense version, I highly recommend trying out an elbow bridge. You're gonna go down to your elbows from a bridge. Try not to be as clumsy as I was right there. And then press your chest towards the wall. This is a very deep stretch. I don't recommend holding it for too long. And uh, You did it! You made it! I am so proud of you. That was so intense. And you made it through the whole thing. So, pat on the back. You do it great. If you like the video, of course, let me know with a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so that you can see when I post another fun workout acro dance related thing on my channel because that's what we do here. And as always, you lean on dance all the time. It's like your buddy. It's like your friend that you always turn to when you need to cry or you need some support. You need some emotional cleansing. So keep your shoulders strong, girl or boy. So you can dance strong. See you next time.